Boston Celtics experimenting, throwing the reserves into the deep end. And hey, they figured it out, barely, but they did it. I'm going to talk about it right now on a bonus Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Brand, it's holiday season, drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT, no, we not on the Knicks. Flushing competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still being town's finest. Been a race team going up in the rafters. Watch the seeds game in locked on NASA. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic documenting domination. Matter pen of back bay, it's all seeds nation. Rain and Jay's how we started raising business. How we finish locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. Peace. Hey there, welcome back to the lockdown. Celtics podcast right here. I know what show this is on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I got you covered every single day, Monday through Friday, plus a bonus podcast. Yes, even when the season is done and figured out and these games don't mean anything, this podcast means something to you, I hope. It means something to me. So subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you watch the show on YouTube. Get into the comment section. Let me know what you think about the Celtics 101-100 win over the Sacramento Kings. If you're new to the show, I'm John Corrales. I used to play a long time ago. Now I'm covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal as a beat writer. And what a fun one this was to watch in person. Uh, first few quarters, kind of normal. Celtics make a big run. The Kings make their big run uh, back and forth. The Celtics end up making uh, more runs than the Kings uh, until the fourth quarter. Start the fourth quarter with a, a wild group of uh, Tatum and Pritchard, I think Hauser, Mikhailuk, and Tillman might have been the group. Uh, a group that has played zero minutes together ever. So uh, just throwing throwing things out there. Uh, going with these reserve groups, uh, different combinations throughout the game which is what he, uh, Joe Mazzulla had basically said he's going to do. This is an opportunity here to try some new things. There's no Jalen Brown. There's no Derek White. No big deal for those two guys. Just kind of getting them right a little bit. Getting Derek White a day off and getting, I think Jalen probably needs a couple days off. Just let's get, let's get him right. Let's get him, try to get the hand healed a little bit. Let's get that back healed, get whatever is bothering him healed. So. Okay, plugging along, right? Jason Tatum's doing Jason Tatum things here and there. Uh, not the best shooting night, but, you know, dishing the ball, doing other things. Kristaps Porzingis having a great night. Uh, Al Horford, uh, you know, has, has uh, you know, a couple of moments. Everybody has their moments except for except for Sam Hauser, which, hey, sometimes you're the bug, sometimes you're the windshield. And, uh, yeah, Sam Hauser, one of 18. One of 18, he shot 5.6% <laughs> in this game. One for 13, he shot 7.7% from three. After the game, is funny, uh, Peyton Pritch was like, do you, you know, you're a shooter, do you have any concern for Sam Hauser? He's like, nope. He said, I actually look at, like, look at this like a good thing. You know, if he had shot normal, a normal amount, a normal percentage, this would have been a 20 point game, which is, you know, hey, look, he shoots, he shoots 40%. So that would have been five three pointers there. So instead, of, instead of one, it's five. So four more, that's 12 points. So it's a 13 point game theoretically. And honestly, with the timing of some of those three pointers, that game changes a lot. So it's not even just adding 12 points, it's changing the dynamic of the game. That run doesn't happen from the Kings. So, so Pritchard's right. And he said, this just means the next couple of games, he's going to be on fire, which hundred percent, I a hundred percent agree with, but anyway, yeah, whatever. I didn't care much about the story of Celtics made their run and yeah, some experimentation here and there, but nothing crazy. You had some early minutes for some of these other guys, but it wasn't until the fourth quarter when Jordan Walsh came off the bench and was like, oh, we're going to early Jordan Walsh. Okay, all right, let's let's see what we got here. Celtics were up 14. They got up to, to 19 with Tatum played like three minutes, not even three minutes in the fourth quarter. None of the other starters other than um, Hauser, who played a 
ton. Uh, but Holiday didn't play the fourth. Porzingis, Horford, they didn't play the fourth. Tatum played a couple of minutes, and then it was up to the reserves, and they got the they got the lead up to nineteen. And it's like the the Kings were like more kind of blinded by the blur of green jerseys when they finally stopped and looked around halfway through the fourth quarter. They're like, "Wait a second! Wait a second! Wait a second! These aren't them." It's like the spaceball things, uh, the spaceball scene. These aren't them. These are their stunt doubles. You know, it's like, that's not Al Horford. That's Xavier Tillman. Like, that's not Derek White. That's Peyton Pritchard. Like, that, that that's not Drew Holiday. That, you know, it's like you look around, you go, oh, we can actually try and probably, you know, cut into that lead. So they did. Uh, and the Celtics just, they got some good looks. They got some decent looks. They just couldn't hit any of them. And so the Kings cut into the lead and Missoula was like, nah, you, you guys, this is all you, this is all you. And it didn't go great. It didn't go great, but to their credit, they kept fighting the Celtics. Maybe they got a little frantic, a tiny bit. Maybe they got a little sped up tiny bit, but they kept fighting and okay. So De'Aaron Fox goes off for a 40 point game and he hits some crazy threes. He banks one in. It's like, Oh God, here we go. The Celtics come down. Sam Hauser drives down the right sideline, gets into the middle of the paint. He had played a big chunk of the fourth quarter. He looked a little tired. He had no lift. He gets blocked. But I don't know if it was Keon Ellis or Keegan Murray. One of those guys has the ball in his hands and credit Sam Hauser. Tips the ball away, gets a steal, gets it out to Tillman. Tillman takes a dribble right, gets into the lane, lets it go. And he said after the game, he's like, I knew as soon as I let it go, that thing was going in. It goes in, and Sacramento calls a timeout. Now, it's funny to see that in in the arena and also watch it again afterwards. You can see on in the game where um, Tillman hits the shot. Sabonis is inbounding. De'Aaron Fox is, is on the right side of the lane. And Sabonis, like, waves off Mike Brown. He's like, hold on, we got it. And, like, De'Aaron Fox does that. But Brown calls the timeout anyway. And Sabonis puts his hands on his head and gets into a crouch. He's like, oh, we had it. And they did. And Joe Mazzula afterwards said, I'm surprised they call a timeout. And I think Mike Brown just instinctively calls the timeout and was like, as soon as he called it, he got out of the way and he was like, oh, ah. I was watching him call a timeout. And then he kind of like, he stepped onto the court to call a timeout. And then he kind of jumped off it, like as if he wasn't like, he was hoping they didn't see him. And which they did, they, they blew the whistle. Like he, he just instinctively calls it. And then afterwards he's like, damn it. Because they all knew the way the Celtics defense had been playing the play there was inbound the ball to De'Aaron Fox. He already had one player, one Celtic behind him. He was going to get past three more because Peyton Pritchard was flat-footed on the on the right side of the the left side of the floor, and two guys were kind of bunched up on the right side of the floor. So De'Aaron Fox had like a quick chance to just take it right up the middle, and he had a real good chance to either get a layup. Which it's a one point game. They they he could have scored. De'Aaron Fox, Mr. Clutch, first ever clutch award winner. He had a chance that he could have scored that. And they screwed it up by calling a timeout. And it's one of those things where they called it. And now you can look back and be like, damn, you shouldn't have called that. Now, if they didn't call it and he screws up the play, 
and they miss and the Celtics win, then people will be like, why didn't you call the time out there? The play there was to let, let him get the ball and go and probe. He's so fast that if he gets over, like he could have gotten over half court. It's like 7.9 on the clock. He could have gotten over half court with five seconds left. And if, if that point he's shut off, then you can call the timeout. You get yourself four or five seconds, which is plenty of time. Then you can draw up a play. But I, I have a feeling if they had let that play go, that he would have come down and he would have hit a shot because he's the Aaron Fox. And the way he was, first of all, he's the Aaron Fox and he hits shots in those situations. And second of all, he was on a, you know, a game long heater. He shot 55% from the field, seven of 13 from three. He was, he was their one guy that could hit shots. Uh, so that was, uh, that was the play and they screwed it up. So credit the Celtics though, for like that. They made their play coming down without a timeout. So sometimes you call them, sometimes you don't, uh, they should not have, but it was fun to see the experimentation. The way I put it on Boston sports journal is all of those break glass in case of emergency boxes that you see somewhere, wherever it is and whatever's in there, whether the fire extinguisher or whatever else might be, might be in that break glass thing. Someone has to set those up, right? They don't just magically appear. Someone has to take the stuff and put it in there and close the box and hang it up. That's kind of what the, that process was kind of what this game was where you have to figure out like, okay, let's get this fire extinguisher. Let's figure out where to put it, how to hang it, where, you know, all that stuff. That's what getting Tillman and, you know, Hauser and Pritchard in those situations. It's one of those, you never know when you're going to need one of those guys or two of those guys, right? You just never know the situation where one or two of those guys is going to have to come in and make a play late in the game. The ball is going to fall into one of their hands, right? It's the fourth quarter. It's a playoff game. It's a game three somewhere. And someone has fouled out. Someone got tossed because of a ref. Someone, you know, sprained an ankle and can't finish the game. Whatever it is, one of these guys has the potential to get in there and have to finish a game. And you never know when the ball bounces a certain way. The ball bounces towards Tillman. He's going to have to make a play. Three seconds left. If the ball falls into Tillman's hands like it did against the, the Kings, and he's like, damn, that's a wide open lane. You want him to have that confidence to say, I'm going to take this wide open lane and watch me hit this shot. He did it in this game. He can do it again, right? They're hugging up on Tatum. They're hugging up on Brown. Porzingis can't get free. Holiday can't get free. Tillman's in the game. Boom, the ball. He gets the loose ball, the hustle ball, and you're down one. It's three seconds left. Is he going to freeze and look for Jason Tatum? No, man, he can hit that shot. Go take that shot. That's what this that's what this game was about. So kudos to Joe Missoula for using this game for what it is and making full use of it, getting those guys in there and saying, hey, you know what? You're blowing the lead. Great, great. Let's see you finish this. Let's see you close this. There's no possible way they could replicate a, a situation like that. You got the Kings fighting they're trying to win they needed to win that game they that game was so pivotal for them that it could be the thing that keeps them in the play in tournament had they had won that there was a path out of the play in tournament for them that game right there for sacramento could be the difference between having to play two extra games before the playoffs versus getting ready for the 3-6 matchup. That's it's not an overstatement. I don't know. They, they, they should have won that game the way that fourth quarter was going. That was that was a gift from Joe Missoula. Like, here we go, guys. Teach these guys a lesson. I'm trying to teach these guys a lesson. Go ahead. Beat us. Let's see what you got. Couldn't do it. Uh, which is a testament also to Boston because they kept fighting. Again, for, for Hauser to not hang his head and tip that ball free and make that play and for Tillman to catch it and make that play and hit that shot. Spectacular. That those are, those are little things that when they show up on the film and they show up in the film session, 
getting to see that again, kudos to them, right? No one guarantee you, no one on the Celtics is sitting there going, geez, one of one of 13 from three, Sam, maybe you shouldn't be shooting. They're like, no, shoot more. Joe Mazzullo sitting there will look at, at Sam Hauser. I guarantee you, and there's no way to prove this, I guarantee you that one thing Joe Mazzulla is going to do in the next film session, he's going to look at opportunities that Sam Hauser had to shoot, and he's going to put a, a reel together and be like, Sam, that's a shot you should have taken. That's a shot you should have taken. I don't care what happened before that. That shot right there, that is a shot for you. It's not a pass. It's not you. No, that is why we pay you. That is what your job is. Shoot that ball. And the message is going to have to get through to Sam Hauser, like, not have to get through. It's going to get through to Sam Hauser. We have confidence in you. That's the message that Joe Mazzulla is trying to send. We have confidence in you. I'm going to take a film session after you shoot one of 13. And I'm specifically going to point out three, four times where you should have shot the ball and you didn't because you were hesitant or whatever. So that's, I think that would be a good coaching move. But, you know, kudos to Missoula for putting these guys in these situations, uncomfortable situations. Those That group has never played together before. And like, go figure it out. You're playing the Kings. The Kings are out West. They're a playoff team, potentially. They're fighting for something. We can't put, we can't replicate that in practice. So great. The rest of these guys know what, what this is like. You guys got to go figure it out. And this is a chance for you to get playoff minutes before the playoffs. So go have at it. Have at it, Peyton Pritchard as you become the focal point of the offense, get double teamed the whole time down because he had a, a hot night and they were like, no, we're going to take the ball out of this guy's hands. It's great film. It's great for him to go and look at that and learn. So good stuff all the way around. Uh, and Christoph Porzingis, I got to finish on him. Just fun. Just uh, the, the happiest dude in the NBA. Once again, the happiest dude in the NBA. Uh, that play, third quarter, third had to be third quarter. He didn't play in the fourth, where he's trying to make a hustle play, and he just kind of runs into the crowd, and could have stopped himself, but just keeps on going deeper and deeper and deeper into the crowd. Taps on his chest, puts his hand up, eats it up. Man, that dude knows how to knows how to play to the crowd, uh, and he was great in this game too. So. It, it, if they're going to, if you're going to switch and you're going to willingly put a guard on Porzingis, good luck. Good luck with that. Uh, 24 minutes for him, 20 points, 11 rebounds, two, two assists, two steals, a block, just one turnover. That one of those steals was an early steal and breakaway dunk. You don't see that happen uh, very often. So, all right, that's it. I'm not going to go too too much on, on this game. Celtics win. Who cares if they win or lose at this point? But uh, it's nice to see them win. Nice to see them, you know, finish it off with a win just for, like, Tillman's sake, just for the second unit's sake. That 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 is meaningful. In that sense, I'm glad that they won because, you know, it gives you just a little sense of accomplishment. We were tasked to do something, and we did it. It wasn't the prettiest, but we did it. And, you know, good for them. I don't know what's going to happen on Sunday. Sunday, the Portland Trailblazers are in. Uh, oh, I don't know. Is is Rob going to be around? Is uh, uh, Brogdon going to be around? Some familiar faces going to be around. Uh, we're going to see Delano Banton. Woo! Delano been balling lately. So uh, we'll see if we can hold, hold off a 30-piece from Delano Banton after that. Uh, thank you for... Listening to this bonus podcast, it's been fun. 20 podcasts in a row. I am taking Saturday off. Yes, I finally get, I'm like Derek White. I have a lower back contusion. I need to take a podcasting day off. But I will be back Sunday after the Portland game, hopefully with more fun stuff. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcast. Watch the show on YouTube. Hop in the comment section. Let me know what you think there. And spread the word, share the podcast, tell your friends they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here in the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.